Hi, this is Lefty Dad, and I'm going to be doing a replay of a game from 1969. Here's the season, so I click on that, and it's going to be the second half of a game from October 18th, kind of near the beginning of the season, between the New York Knicks and the Chicago Bulls. And you can see we're just starting the third quarter, and the Chicago Bulls are up by four points. So let's go to the game and actually I'm going to turn off the sound because the sound would be incredibly noisy. <laughs> now where, where's the sound? Okay, here's the sound. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off. Okay, should have done that before I started this. So here we go and uh, New York has the ball and we've got Dick Barnett bringing the ball up. I'm not quite sure why they have Barnett playing the point guard position instead of Walt Frazier, but there may be some reason. Uh, so we could possibly have a steal here, Clem Haskins, who is a point guard, if he, uh, if, if this blue die roll here is above a one, then he will steal the ball, which he does. Now, up here, uh, this black, or this colored square is, is a dark red, uh, so it's kind of like red, you know, stop, green, go. This means that the uh, bulls are not so great at the fast break, and it could be a combination of their ability to run in transition and the defensive ability <coughs> of the Knicks to stop uh, things in transition, and I think that has a lot to do with it, especially Walt Frazier. But you can see down here in the lower left, uh, Haskins has a three rating for offensive fast breaks and a two for defense. I think, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything over a four, uh, but one is the worst four or five is the best and Jerry Sloan is not so great either and over here you can see defensively Dick Barnett is two which is good and then of course Frazier is incredibly good and um, if you get the PC game and I guess if you get the the board game also which I have it's a direct port of the board game uh, which a lot of people like to have direct ports uh, but they, they have a fast break chart, so all the fast break plays are referred to a chart. It doesn't show it in the base basketball game while you're playing it, but you can go back and look at it, and it's one of the best fast break charts. It's not cookie cutter. It's not something really kind of simplistic. It, it has a lot of uh, depth and character to it. So uh, I, I'd show it to you, but I don't want to get things messed up here right in the middle of the game. Okay, so Haskins steals the ball. Now uh, the Knicks come down, we can either go, you can see over here, this is like a, a play action card, it's called, if you had the board game. And it's, it's somewhat randomized, but uh, the players that are supposed to, if, if you, if you have, if, you're, if your player is a one, that's your go-to rating, and in the upper right-hand corner you can see these numbers, and uh, uh, Chet Walker and Clem Haskins are going to do most of the shooting. Tom Borwinkle will do the least amount of shooting. Uh, but this says you need to go with somebody who's rated a three, and there are no threes down here. So then in order, in the order of uh, how it gets picked, then you go with a two. Well, there are two twos, Jerry Sloan and Bob Love. So I get my choice, which then leads me to decide who has the best matchup to play against, to run a play against, and actually they're both horrible choices because Sloan has Walt Frazier on him and uh, Willis Reed has, uh, I mean Bob Lubb ha has Willis Reed on him, and if you look at the defense up here, th there's a number for each column, and because there's no three-point shot, uh, I believe that this is blank, maybe it's blank all the time uh, because these shots are always uncontested so it's probably blank all the time but you can see that everything 
with Walt Frazier is a one uh, or a uh, the third column is kind of his his defensive blocking shots well it's a two it's not perfect but it's really good and uh, Willis Reed is just as good except he's he'll give uh, kind of an average number of fouls whereas uh, Walt Frazier will foul a little less, a little above average in terms of not causing a foul. So I don't really have a lot of good options here. Jerry Sloan, you can see, is a 42% shooter, and uh, Bob Love is a 47%. I can kind of look and see, is anybody in foul trouble? Do I want to try to get somebody in foul trouble? But uh, neither of them are in foul trouble. So it really doesn't matter a whole lot. I think I'll go with Bob Love, and uh, he misses. Borwinkle gets the offensive rebound. Now, if he can roll a five or a six, he will be fouled. And he is fouled. Okay, Stallworth. That's his fourth foul. So immediately they bring in Nate Bowman. I'm, I'm coaching Chicago. I play every single game of a season, and I always coach one team. It just depends on if I like the team or if I want, if I feel like a team is an underdog, I'll coach them because of my brilliant coaching skills. I'll probably be able to beat the better team. Ha ha. I, I don't know. I guess I'm coaching Chicago because uh, they were a really tough defensive team and they are the underdog. So uh, Stallworth fouls. Borwinkle has two free throw shots. You can see, and a, a great thing about this game, you can see immediately so uh, uh, wonderfully displayed that Love is currently 5 for 14 in the game and Borwinkle gets his 12th rebound of the game and th this means 9 of them have been defensive It was, I I'm sorry uh, it it's his 12th rebound and I, and I guess 9 of them have been offensive I can check that and then uh, you can see currently he's 4 for 6 at shooting free throws he's a 66% free throw shooter uh, and he'll take the first one and he'll make it take the second one and miss it now I think I can look up here 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 we go with a you just click that and you get the current box score which you can break down by quarter here but uh, Borwinkle has nine offensive rebounds yeah so he, he's doing great at, on the offensive board which that thing indicated, so I was correct. In uh, Bob Love has a technical foul, by the way, and it, it tracks that. So you can look here. Uh, I guess it would show that if you were on the substitution screen, but you can look here for the recap. And Chicago, which is 0-1, it's early in the season, Knicks are 1-1, one one, uh, has scored the first five points of the quarter, and that's why they're ahead. But you can see that Barnett is got 17 points already. Walt Frazier has 12 assists. Uh, Chet Walker has 17 points and he's also the one doing all the passing for baskets. So uh, now we've got a five point lead and uh, all you have to really do is click enter if you want to have it set up this way. You, you can roll the dice and manually enter things. You can play the, I, I believe you can play the board game with cards and dice and just use this for stats you can with the baseball game uh, I, I you know I don't do that mainly because I'm trying to replay all these seasons while I still have life <laughs> and I would never be able to do that if, if I had and I used to keep you know manual stats uh, uh, you know like in 1969 and I you know it's like I, I don't want to go back to that I've all been there and done that Okay, Dick Barnett is going to make the play because this pa uh, this card just says point guard. And there will be an assist uh, if he makes it from the small forward if he has an assist number above two. And you can see that Bradley has an assist number above uh, of eight. So that means that's going to be a, a, a non-shooting foul against Haskins. It's his third. And uh, this asks, there, there are like rules and instructions that come with the game that clarify all this stuff. I, I play so many games that I looked this up years ago and 
uh, I know that this will, uh, there'll be some little system here that decides who draws the foul. In this case, it's just Haskins. I believe uh, it's, it's based on one of the dice roll numbers uh, up here where it's, I, I'm, you can read it in the instructions, but I don't pay any attention to it anymore because it's all accurate and correct. And, you know, it's like, it makes the game, I guess they call that Im immersibility immersion and the game is greater. So, Barnett, and this is way back when you got to shoot one free throw for a non-shooting foul. So now Barnett has 18 points. He's the leading scorer. Now we, we would have a choice here. You can see there it says a choice between um, uh, Haskins or Walker, and we will go with Chet Walker. And uh, he shoots and he makes the basket. So now he's got 19 points. Bradley, here's the play to Bradley. Bradley, uh, Bowman will get an assist if he can make this, but no, it's a turnover. Third turnover of the game. Now, um, I'm only responsible for substituting the Bulls, and you can see that down here in the lower right-hand corner is the rest number of minutes per half that a player has to have. Borwinkle will need to sit down when we get past the six minute mark. If you exceed that, then these players go to their B rating, uh, which is which is bad. Uh, you can check the current situation on these players, just right click and you get what their real stats were. You get how they're doing the season, only two games in. And then you also get how they're currently doing in the game. You get their date of birth, you get how many years they've been in the league, stuff like that. So it, it's, you know, the best thing you can get for if you want to do basketball replays. Okay, now we're back here, and I think we'll go with ha we'll, we'll go with Haskins this time. So I just have to pre So it's like, you know, uh, point guard is a one, shooting guard is a two, small forward is a three. So you can just on your keyboard press one, and there you go, and then you press enter. And now Barnett will probably steal it, he does. So uh, you, you just click, keep clicking enter and the game goes on and you can replay some of these seasons before the end of the 21st century. Uh, and Borwinkle, so in this particular case, if Borwinkle had a small uh, number for blocking shots, the smaller the better, he could have blocked the shot. I don't think he could have blocked the shot under any circumstances because Bowman rolled a one. And uh, But anyway, if he would have rolled a four, five, or six, there would have been a block shot. So there's a basket, you see. And, and <clears throat> this shows the same thing too. If, if it's higher than this number, it's a block shot. Otherwise, a two-point basket, it's good. Bowman, two for eight, he's made his fourth point. Okay, now anybody, now when I get in a situation like this, I sometimes look to see if there's somebody can create foul trouble for. They're all good at defense. Uh, so I kind of have to decide, do I want to try to get a third foul on Frazier, or do I want to go with the weakest defensive player? Uh, I have a four-point lead, so maybe I'll try to see if I can foul Frazier, and I do. So that's part of the strategy. Sometimes they say, oh, there's not enough strategy in the game. Well, there is what I call uh, a good level, uh, really a, a, even a perfect level of strategy. So there's strategy. I just got a third foul on Frazier. They're not gonna take him out, I don't think. Okay, he misses the first one. Now here's a rare play in replay baseball and basketball have the best rare plays I've seen anywhere. And the basketball replays are really great. So here's a rare play. Uh, okay, so Reed gets a de uh, rebound. Rhett Holtzman protests the original foul, or the original call, uh, which I guess was Frazier committing the foul. But the, the officials wave him away. But there, there's every kind of thing you can imagine uh, with these rare plays. So the play goes on. Bradley comes down. Bradley is going to shoot. And he will make it if he can roll uh, higher than a three. It's a missed shot. Otherwise, 
two-point basket. So one, two, or three, he makes it, he misses it. And uh, here is the rebound matchup. There's a lot, there's uh, variability, which is realistic and immerse, uh, creates immersion. So some of these offensive rebounders get a boost temporarily. Uh, so normally Bradley uh, Barnett is a, a three for offensive rebounding, you can see up here, but he got a three boost to make him equal with Haskins. But if it's equal, the uh, defensive rebounder gets uh, the rebound. You can see it's the second, it's the third rebound in the game for Haskins. It's his second defensive rebound. So all you have to do is press enter to continue. You don't have to, you know, you've got all these, op you can do auto play, which I don't do, but that's like the computer handles it. You can call a timeout. You can just press T and get a timeout. You press enter to get the next action card. You can press here to get the uh, stats of everybody. And it, <laughs> so there they are. You can play players safe too, but there's a tremendous uh, penalty to be played if you want to play somebody safe. So uh, I hardly ever do that. You can also stall if you, you know, if it's near the end of the game, or you can hurry if you're behind. But I just press enter and on we go. And uh, we will try to have Clem Haskins take the shot here. And he is going to uh, uh, miss the shot. Or no, he's going to pass. If, if it's uh, above a three, it's pass, not a, a shot. And it would have been a special kind of what's called a column two shot, which if that comes up, I'll explain that. And uh, Chet Walker is probably going to have the ball stolen here by Frazier. And he does have it stolen. Third steal for Frazier. Now Barnett is coming up. The play goes to Barnett. He turns it over. We have 9-12 to go in the game, and still the score is 74-70. to This time, we'll go to Chet Walker. Uh, press the 3. He misses it. He is currently 9 for 15, so he, he's having a good game. But And uh, Reed gets his 10th rebound. Willis Reed scores easily. He's 6 for 9. So now it's a 2-point game, and I'm just going to keep coming down. I think I'll uh, try... Chet Walker has the best shooting percentage, so I think we'll stick with Chet Walker, but Nate Bowman steals the ball, so the Knicks are tough. Here comes Bill Bradley now. A P with a plus sign means it could possibly be a pass, or it could be what's called a two-column shot, which is like a one-on-one -on -one situation with the defender. And if, uh, if he rolls a higher than a three, it'll be a pass. If it's three or less, it'll be a two-column shot. So, okay, so it's a higher, so higher, it's a pass. So now the, you've got a 24-second clock, which is basically you've got three uh, th three things you can do, three plays you can make within the 24 seconds. So now it's down to 12 seconds. <laughs> it goes to Bradley. You can just click on the player, too, uh, in the, number, uh, the dice up here, so to speak. <laughs> And now, if it's higher than three, it's it's a missed shot. Otherwise, it's a basket. So it is a basket because it's a one. Bradley's four for eight, and we have a tie score with eight minutes to go. This time, we'll go Clem Haskins, just for the heck of it. But he goes against Nate Bowman, who is, this is uh, the three column, which uh, indicates how well the defender can block shots and he can really block shots and he does block it. Third block of the game, Barnett gets the rebound and the Knicks can go ahead and that A means it is an assist and the assist goes to the point guard but it can't go to the point guard because he made the, uh, well actually uh, there is some kind of a system to determine who this uh, when there's an assist, who, who is going to get the basket? And um, again, you could read in the rules exactly, uh, I, I, like here's a two, and the two, yeah, okay, here, here's the system. So there's a blue die roll of two, and you look down here, and the two is the shooting forward, the small forward. So that's why Bradley got the basket from Barnett. 
so that's how it all works out, but I don't really pay attention to that because that, I mean, it's, it's interesting when you're learning the game, but it, it you know, it's all going to be the same. The, the computer or the game is perfectly programmed, so there aren't going to be any errors or anything. Okay, Chet Walker comes down. He immediately scores. 21st point, tie game again. And now Bradley comes down. The play is going to go to Bradley. Bradley scores easily. And uh, Jerry Sloan now. The play goes to Jerry Sloan. And now can Bill Bradley block Jerry Sloan's shot? Probably not. It's going to have to be a five or a six to block, and he doesn't. So Sloan gets the basket, and he has an assist from Tom Borwinkle. Tie game again. Here's Frazier. Frazier gets the uh, ball to Barnett, and look, here's the five. Up here, the blue guy, and you go to five, and it, it says the basket's going to go to either the sh to the shooting guard, but Frazier is getting the assist, so if that's the case, it goes to the point guard. So that's why it went to Barnett, if you want to know all those details. 13th assist for Frazier, and the Knicks have the lead. Now we have to decide, let's have Bob Love go against Reed. He's pretty good at drawing fouls. Now, it's probably going to be a pass, which means that Reed's defense is so good that it forced him to give up the ball. Uh, it is a pass, and now there are 12 seconds up here. You can see on the 24 second clock. It goes to Borwinkle. Borwinkle is going to take a, a shot against Bowman and Bowman is above average at contesting shots so Borwinkle misses the shot and uh, Walker, uh, uh, Reed has the rebound. His 18th. Nine of them have been uh, defensive rebounds. Frazier comes down. He misses the shot. He's only taken four shots. But Reed gets the offensive rebound. You see he got a five, kind of this random five boost. And now, uh, if I roll a five or a six, he'll be fouled. And he's not fouled, getting the rebound. So it goes to Frazier. Frazier passes. Now you see there's 12 seconds left on the shot clock up there. Reed will try to, to do something, and he creates an offensive foul. We have six minutes to go, so we are going to sub and get Borwinkle out. And you can see right over here in the notes for Bob Love, he's got one technical foul so far. And this this is a depth, a, a depth chart that the computer generates to make sure the playing time is accurate and realistic. So we're going to bring the key bench player is Walt Wesley for Borwinkle. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to do this, but uh, you know this all makes sense. So now Wesley is in, and we don't have to worry about substituting anybody until we get near the end of the quarter. So Clump Haskins, this is a, uh, when you get a roll down here, you could get an injury after the game is over. You could have a player get injured for two, three, four games. The uh, It's an alphabetic letter, so A means that, well, what it means is that you can't get injured because he's played all 82 games, but if you had a, C or a D, then there's a good chance your player, that player may be injured for the next game. Bowman gets the rebound. Uh, Knicks have the lead, but Haskins is probably going to steal it unless they roll a one. So Haskins steals the ball, and here come the Bulls walking the ball up the court. Haskins, he makes the basket. If it had, if it had been one of these other numbers. There could have been a con uh, it could, would have been a contested shot. You see now the Knicks have brought in John Warren. They brought in Mike Reardon. They brought in Cassie Russell. So a lot of they're going to their second unit. The Bulls haven't had to do that. There is a uh, a home court advantage in this game. It's hard to win on the road. You can see here I have the AI is doing the substitutions for the Knicks. They're also doing the strategy. You can customize this so that the AI does only the substitutions, or you can unclick all these and then you can be the, you can make the decisions for both teams, but I prefer playing against the AI because it's fun, it's challenging, and the AI is really smart, never does anything stupid. So Haskins scores, Wesley gets his first assist, and it's a tie game, 5-12 to go. Mike Reardon, now here could be a, sometimes it'll say, 
Has, uh, Reardon's lucky he didn't get injured, so they kind of know, okay, well, he missed, he dodged the bullet. Now you don't know if he dodged the bullet, but you see it's a B here, and he did miss one game, so possibly we'll see at the end of the game. It'll show you who's going to be injured for upcoming games. Haskins has the rebound. It's a tie game. They go into Wesley against Bowman. Now this is good and fouled. So uh, Bowman gets a second foul. Haskins gets his fifth assist. Wesley is one and one for shooting, and he's not. He's a 66 percent, which back in 1969 wasn't. You know, that was probably average. And he makes the free throw. So it's a three-point lead now. Bowman, this, he gets a pass plus. And what this means is that it whoever he passes to, and he's passing to Reed, will get 10 points added to their uh, good uh, outcome for a field goal. And you can see... Reed is listed as a 41, but now because it's a great pass from Bowman, he's a 51. So this just has to be something that is below 5-1 five, five or below, and it's 5-4, so he misses it. But Cassie Russell gets the offensive rebound. They go back to Bowman. Bowman makes the basket. <coughs> so it's a one-point game again. Bob Love, good and fouled. Good and fouled. Continuation as they used to say back in 1969 on ABC television when they had the games on TV. Uh, so that's Reed's third foul. And now the Knicks are in the uh, bonus or the penalty, you know, whatever you want to call it, bonus penalty. And uh, this is all accurate to the specific season you're playing. You can set that up. So he has two to one. He has two opportunities to make one. And he makes it, so now it is a four-point lead. John Warren is down. He misses the shot. Chet Walker gets the rebound. Bob Love is going to... There's a switch. He's being guarded by Bowman at the rim. Bowman, uh, he's going to have to roll a one or a two to make it. And he rolls a two, so he's successful. Made a tough shot against a tough defender at the rim. And... Uh, Here come the Knicks. Bowman is going to have an assist, and you can see uh, assist. He had a blue die four, which means the point guard is who he passed the ball to, and he passes it to Warren. So it's a four-point game. Uh, I think we'll go with Bob Love and see if he can get the fourth foul on Willis Reed. So Love, uh oh, it's going to be contested. Reed is really tough. To, uh, guarding uh, uh, the, the two-point shot and Love misses, but Haskins gets this plus three bounce. He was a, normally a four, but now he's a seven, so he gets the offensive rebound. So fresh 24 second clock. Walker, uh, if he... Ha now you may be able to see what a one-on-one -on -one column two shot looks like. Yeah, you do. So if this had been a five or a six, he would have had to pass, but he's going to go one-on-one -on -one against Russell. And he, uh, they, they look at your column two here, and uh, he's basically, this, he'll be a 50% shooter. If he can get a uh, one, two, or three, it'll be good. But he got a six, so he missed it. Bowman gets the rebound. Willis Reed, the play goes to him. If he can roll a one or a two, he'll go one-on-one -on -one against Love, but he rolls a three, so he has to give up the ball. And now there are 12 seconds on the clock. Kazi Russell misses the shot. And uh, Bob, and, but Reed gets the offensive rebound. If they roll a four or five, I mean a five or a six, it's going to be a foul, but it's not. And then Red Holtzman calls a timeout with three minutes to go. So we'll have to, we'll, we'll substitute out a lot of our players and see how that goes. So we're going to bring in Shalir Halliman. We're going to bring in Bob Weiss uh, to play the other guard position. And, uh, we're going to bring in Al Tucker for Walker, and we're, we'll bring in Bob Kaufman. So we're really bringing in four players. Now, <laughs> we have, you can see over here, we have three players that are rated go to one. You, you generally want to have at least one player that's a go to one or go to two. Otherwise, you, you could really stifle your offense and, and not be able to get a shot off within 24 seconds. So 
three minutes to go. Uh, it, they brought Frazier back, so that's really the only thing I can see that they did differently. Willis Reed could have it sold in prob by by Wesley. You see how how uh, detailed this determination is. Uh, he would steal the ball if uh, it was a. Uh, it would have to be only way you could do this is if you rolled a one, which he did. But then the blue die would have to be a, a one, but it was a five, so he does steal it. And uh, <coughs> well, Wesley, I guess, is really good at stealing the ball. Uh, I think I made a mistake. I wanted Bob Kaufman, <laughs> and, uh, so I need to go. I need to do something about that. So Johnny Baum only played three games. That season, going to pass. I'm going to call timeout with 12 seconds left. See what I did wrong here. Uh, yeah, I, I meant Bob Kaufman. Okay, he's in. So Johnny Baum was trying to get into the game there. Uh, God, I can't remember. Dick, what what is the coach's name on the Bulls? D uh, anyway, uh, Bob Weiss misses the shot, his first shot of the game. Kaufman gets the rebound, and he's fouled. There's the fourth foul on Reed, and Bob Hoskett comes in. And now he's going to get three to make two. So they're in this old-fashioned three to make two situation. Kaufman makes the first one, <coughs> makes the second one. It's a six-point lead. Frazier comes down. He gets the assist, passing to Cassie Russell. Fourteenth assist. And here's Halliman. He scores. Weiss with the assist. Hoskett scores. And uh, now we have a choice. I think we're going to see if we can get a fourth foul on Frazier. Uh, but unfortunately it backfires because Frazier is really tough on defense and he forces a miss. Frazier gets the rebound. Frazier comes down, but he misses. And uh, now we've got Halliman. But it, uh, Russell steals the ball. Second seal of the game. Here comes Frazier. He turns it over. Frazier doesn't have to rest anymore, so uh, he's in it for the rest of the game. None, uh, I'm going to have to... Walt Wesley has to rest some more, but we'll bring uh, Borwinkle back in soon. I have to decide who to go up against. We'll have Halliman against Warren. Warren's the, easy, the uh, poor defender, but he misses anyway. And now Bowman comes down uh, over to Hoskett, and he misses Wesley with the rebound. Now we could have a fast break here, uh, but I'll just do a fast break to show you what it's like. Uh, okay, here's a fast break. But the blue die is not higher than the fast break rating. So uh, Weiss is bringing the ball down with a four on the blue die. And his fast break rating is, is four, which is not good. And it said the only way he would have had a good basket would be if he would have had a, uh, a one, two, or three, which is not uncommon. But he's not so good at it, so he misses the, uh, the, the shot. And I guess the ball went out of bounds. Now we're going to do a uh, home, the home court advantage for the Bulls is a three. So we'll see who got, uh, who will get to take the ball out. And if it is a four, five, or six, it'll be the Bulls, but it's a one. So the Knicks get the defensive team rebound. 38 seconds to go, and Halliman fouls Warren. Warren makes the first one, makes the second one. It's a two point game. 32 seconds to go. Tucker uh, charging. And now here's Frazier. He draws a foul. It's only the third team foul, so they're not in the bonus. They've got five timeouts to go. Knicks have four timeouts to go. Okay. Ah, Frazier makes it. He would have had to roll a, a one through four, and he did to make that. So now it's a one point game, and we're down to 16 seconds to go. And Kaufman draws a foul against Hoskett. Three to make two. He misses the first one, but he'll get two more. Misses the second one. He misses the third one. Ooh, not good. Kaufman is a 72% free throw shooter. Frazier comes down, passes the ball, 
eight seconds to go, two seconds to go, right at the buzzer, and he makes a fabulous pass to John Warren, who scores 15th assist, and that's the end of the quarter. Now, these little green dots come up conveniently uh, for if you're manually coaching the team, and you can, this just says the starting player is ready to come back in, so I just have to click these, and uh, we're ready to go. Now, I could, uh, I could, you know, sub, but I don't have to. But I can look here at the, uh, you can see that New York outscored Chicago by one point, 25, 26, 25. Barnett has 20, Walker has 21. So let's go now. You can look at the play-by-play -play here if you want for the third quarter. It gives you every single detail you can look for any quarter. And uh, there's the box score. Okay, we're back, we'll go to the next quarter. Back then, you had had jump, jump ball before every quarter started, and uh, the, it's above 34, so now it goes to uh, the visiting team, Hoskett with the ball. Love forces a miss there, and Borwinkle gets the rebound. Here comes Borwinkle, and Bowman is tough at defense, and uh, he would have had a roll of one or a two. He doesn't, so he misses. Bowman with his 10th rebound. Here comes Bradley. Now, Bradley, this is one of those injury numbers. It's an F. He missed, he only played 67 games, so it's possible that now he's going to be injured for one or two or three games after this is over in the upcoming schedule. Walker with the rebound. Uh, I guess. We'll, We'll, we'll see what Jerry Sloan can do here. He's not the yeah, uh, charging foul, I guess. So the Knicks have a one-point lead. Bradley, he creates an offensive foul. So let's... <coughs> who's the poorest defender? Probably Bill Bradley. So Chet Walker goes against Bradley and he scores. He would have scored against anybody there. So one-point lead, seesaw game... Frazier, it's a switch, and he's going to the rim against Borwinkle. Borwinkle, one, two, or three, he scores, but it's not a one, two, or three, so he missed it, but Reed gets the offensive rebound. Will he get fouled? No, he's not fouled. So, uh, fresh 24, Dave Stallworth now is at center, and we'll see if he has to give up the dribble. He does, the ball, and... Uh, 12 seconds on the clock, it's over to Barnett. Barnett draws the foul against Haskins. That's a fourth foul. And uh, he's two for two from the line. Misses the first one, makes the second one. Tie game, 10, 12 to go. 21 points for Dick Barnett. We'll go with Walker again. Walker does not draw a foul. He would have had to roll a one through four. Reed with the rebound, 15th rebound. Here comes Frazier. Frazier is up against Sloan. Sloan is really tough on defense. He's going to only have to roll a one to score. He does not. He gives up the ball. Now, uh, Borwinkle is probably going to steal the ball from Barnett, and he does. Okay, we're going to try Walker again against Bradley, and he scores. 25 points, 12 for 20 from the line, or from the field. Uh, Barnett misses the shot. He, 9 for 10. Wow. First time he's missed in the game. Love gets the rebound. Borwinkle, they set up a play for Borwinkle, who shoots the least on the team. He misses. And now possibly he can get an offensive rebound. I mean, he gets the offensive rebound, and he will he be able to do the putback? He does not get the putback, but he draws a foul against Dave Stallworth, his fifth, so the AI takes him out, and now Borwinkle has two shots. He makes the first one free throw, misses the second one. Bowman, three-point lead for Chicago with under nine minutes to go. Here's Frazier. Frazier is going to have a tough time against Jerry Sloan. He misses another one. But Reed gets the offensive rebound. If he can roll a five or a six, he's fouled. They don't do that, so here they set up a play for Nate Bowman. Nate Bowman against Borwinkle. Borwinkle is average, and... Uh, But he is able to make the shot because he rolled a one, two, or three. He rolled a one. Okay, now it's a, 
one point lead for Chicago. Chicago comes down. Anybody can, can call a play for anybody. We'll go with Walker again against Bradley. And Walker does not draw the foul. He would have had it roll a one to four. He did a five. Reed gets the rebound. And Frazier with his fourth turnover. Okay, we nobody down here needs rest. Nobody up there. Well, actually, Bowman. Uh, they're going to have to do something because Bowman pretty soon is going to have to rest. Uh, we're going to go with Bob Love against Willis Reed. He scores. So some clutch baskets here. It's put Chicago up by three with under eight minutes to go. Frazier comes down and Sloan, Sloan is tough defensively. He steals it. It's only his first steal. Haskins misses. Uncontested shot. Just threw up a brick. Bowman with his 12th rebound and Frazier with his 6th turnover. Now they bring Hoskett back in and uh, I guess DeBusher is not playing this game. Not uh, Actually, I don't think, I don't know if DeBusher was on this team yet. But maybe, uh, uh, but anyway, he's not, he, he's not in the game. Uh, Frazier, okay, so uh, Frazier turns it over. Now we've got a choice. We'll go with Walker again in the matchup against Bradley, and he is able to get the ball to Love, who scores, gets his fifth assist. Now it is a five-point lead. Frazier again is going to try to do something. Tough defender Sloan, but he draws a foul against Sloan. Fourth foul, second team foul. Frazier is 3 for 3 from the free throw line. Makes the first one, makes the second one. It's a three point game. Okay, we'll keep, as they say, we're going to feed the pig. Chet Walker. Oh, this uh, dollar sign means they're very clutch late in the game. If it had been under six minutes, I think that means he would have made the basket, but it's not under six minutes, so he doesn't. Reed with the rebound. Dick Barnett. Haven't heard a lot from Dick Barnett. He misses. He had. Missed his last two shots. Before that, he was 9 for 9. Now, there's a fast break opportunity if I want, but I'm not going to do that because uh, I showed you how that worked, and uh, they're terrible at the fast break. So Sloan has the rebound. They walk it up. We're going to feed the pig. We're going to go to Chet Walker, and I think he's going to get a foul. One through four, it's a foul. No, it's not. They don't call a foul, so he passes. Clem Haskins, 12... Uh, it's a, in that situation, it's a, it didn't take any time off the clock. Okay, but I think that Hoskett's going to steal the ball. No. You see, he rolled a 1. If he rolled a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, he would have stolen it, but he rolled a 1, so it's just a pass. And all this is happening quite quickly, so there's still 24 seconds on the clock. Jerry Sloan, great pass to Borwinkle. Borwinkle scores, and now it is back to a 5-point lead. Six minutes to go. Dick Barnett. He has a plus one, a P1, so it's going to be a, a great pass to Frazier, a high percentage shot. And Frazier misses it, so the Knicks are really... Now, Frazier has missed so many shots that he's what they call gone cold, so all of these uh, are going to be misses until he makes one, or uh, he could sit out for a while uh, and then recover, but they're not going to sit him out with five minutes to go. Borwinkle with the ball, Chet Walker... And he does not, they don't call a foul, they're not calling fouls. So he has to pass the ball over to Borwinkle. Borwinkle turns it over. Okay, they're going to go to Frazier. If, if it's in the one column, he's going to miss it. But if it's not, then he'll kind of recover. And see, there's that uh, dollar sign that I was talking about. It's under six minutes. He's a clutch shooter. So is Willis Reed in the cl cr crunch time, the final six minutes. And uh, because he has that, he scored, and then that frees, that opens up. Uh, uh, he's no longer cold, so that he overcomes that problem. Chet Walker scores 27 points, five point lead for Chicago. Here comes Bill Bradley. Bill Bradley, can he draw a foul against Walker? He doesn't. And in this case, he misses the shot. Haskins with the rebound. They're going to do a play to Bob Love who goes to the hoop, goes to the rim, and Hoskett is not so great at blocking the shot, but he does. He blocks it. And Sloan gets the offensive rebound. He's going to try to do the putback, column two, and uh, column two 
you look at that, he's 50-50. If he gets a 1, 2, or 3, it's good. And he gets a 3. So he puts it back. And now it's a 7-point lead. Things are starting to look a little dire for the Knicks, who are 1-1 one and one on the season. The Bulls are 0-1 oh in this early part of the season. Can Walker block Bradley's shot? If he doesn't, he'll score. And he doesn't. So Bradley is able to score. It's a five-point lead. Bob Love <laughs> is going one-on-one -on -one against Breed, which is probably not a good idea, and he gets it blocked. <laughs> but Walker gets the offensive rebound. He throws up what's called a, a low percentage shot, which means they subtract 10. So or they subtract something. I don't know. Uh, he's only got a 20 percent. Uh, 26, a uh, very low possibility, but he rolls a 12. It's under 26, so he threw up a wild shot, and he made it. Seven-point lead four minutes to go. Reed, he could, uh, he's going to go one-on-one -on -one against Love, and uh, he's able to possibly succeed, but he doesn't. And now Walker has the rebound. We're going to go with Walker again. Bradley, can he block the shot? He's not so good at blocking the shot, but he blocks it. Barnett with the rebound. Seven-point lead. 3.48 to go. They're going to do a fast break, so you see what it looks like for them doing a fast break. They're rated a yellow, which is kind of, I guess, a little uh, below average, perhaps. And Frazier drives to the hoop as Sloan, Sloan closes in. His defensive rating is worse than uh, Frazier's offensive rating on a fast break. So uh, it's just it's a foul. He, he draws a foul against Sloan. Sloan has five personal fouls now. Frazier is uh, five for five, and he makes the first one, makes the second one. Now it's a five-point lead. I think they're going to try to foul Sloan out. Love, we're going to go to Love here, and Love It's probably going to have to give up the ball. Yeah, he does. He has to pass, but it goes right back to him, and he makes the shot. Very tough shot. Uh, so that's back to a seven-point lead. Reed, they go to Reed now, and I think Sloan's going to steal it. He does. Now, I'm going to stall, so I uh, press this and you can look at the ball handling rating here, BH. The higher the number, the better they are at ball handling. I can pick who's going to control the ball as they try to stall a little bit. So if, if it's 62 or under, he'll pass, So and it is. So we took a little extra time off the clock there, and uh, now we've got 12 seconds to shoot. Haskins is going to have it stolen by Bradley. So. Under three minutes, and it's a seven-point lead for Chicago. What will the Knicks do? They're going to fast break on that steal. And uh, the blue die, six, is higher than the fast break rating of Hoskett, which is lucky because he's not so good. Now, his fast break rating is 36. So if he can roll under that, he'll score. But he does not, so fast break didn't work so well. Sloan with the rebound. Sloan comes down. They may start... Uh, uh, full court press pretty soon. Uh, okay, he's mismatched. There's a switch. Sloan is on Bradley, and Bradley blocks it. Uh, Bradley is now he gets, Sloan gets the offensive rebound. If he can roll a one, two, or three, it'll be good. But it's he, he's against Hoskett, and Hoskett, uh, of course, is a miss. Reed with the rebound. Two, under two and a half minutes to go, Barnett misses an open shot, and Borwinkle gets his 16th rebound. 2.12 to go, Walker with the ball. Can Bradley block it? No, he's not going to block it this time, and that's the 31st point. It looks like the Chicago Bulls are going to win at home. It's hard to win on the road, they say. Dick Barnett, oh, there's that uh, injury possibility, and... He's missed so many in a row now that he's gone cold, so things are really starting to cr collapse for the Knicks. And Walker with the rebound, they go to Borwinkle, and this could probably be a good and fouled because uh, s 
so yeah, it's good in foul and um, Hoskett uh, fouls a lot. So now Borwinkel gets gets a possible three point play. He makes it, and it is now kind of getting out of hand uh, for the Knicks. Twelve point lead. Fraser comes down. Fraser turns it over, and I think we'll have uh, well we'll have Walker go again. Why not? But Bradley steals it barely, and uh, there's a fast break. The blue die is not higher than the fast break rating of Barnett, so he misses the shot. Borwinkle uh, gets the rebound, and we're going to stall. So uh, we'll let Haskins handle the ball, and it takes 12 seconds off the clock. we got one minute to go. Uh, back to Walker. He scores 33 points. You can see down here he averaged 35 minutes, 21 and a half points per game. So you got all the stats there. And again, you can just right click and you can see uh, Walker is doing great. Seven years in the league. One minute to go, Frazier scores. But they're down by 12. Walker is going to get it stolen by Bradley. They're going to fast break. The defense hustles back and stops the fast break. So you'd have to look at the fast break chart to see why that happened. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it's all very accurate and realistic. Okay, Reed misses the shot. Now the AI has decided to have, uh, I could do this too. You can have them play safe or you can have them crash the board. They crash the board and Barnett got the offensive rebound and he scores. Okay, well, they're only down by 10, but they've got a long way to go. And you see, I can do crash the board. I can play safe. I can sag, all those things. But that's not really necessary right now. Okay, Walker. We'll have Walker go against Bradley again. And he misses. Missed badly. Stallworth. Oh, no. Walker gets the rebound. And he could. Yeah, he's fouled. He got the offensive rebound and was fouled under the hoop. He gets to take two shots. Makes the first one. Makes the second one. 35 points. 24 seconds to go. Barnett turns it over. I think there have been a lot of turnovers for uh, this team. Let's look. 22 for New York, 18 for the Bulls. And uh, let's, let's let Club Haskins shoot. Can Barnett block it? No, he doesn't. And uh, Walker got the assist. So Walker gave it up, got an assist. Frazier. Fouls out Sloan, so here it says sub needed. So we've got eight seconds to go, and uh, we will bring Bob Weiss back in for the last eight seconds. And no, I would probably take a lot of these starters out because uh, then that way they can't get injured. But it's almost over. He makes the free throw, and now uh, we're going to have Haskins go with it. And he misses the shot because of the defense. And Stallworth gets the rebound, but it's the end of the game. And the Knicks have lost 109 to 122. They really, uh, I don't know whether it was, I guess Chicago played great defense there. Uh, but here's the recap. Okay, nobody is injured because it would be listed down here. You can see that. Um, New York had a better shooting percentage uh, and free throw percentage. New York had more steals, but in terms of rebounding, they really got out-rebounded. <coughs> New York had 11 blocks, uh, but the fouls, I think, will be a problem here. We'll look at the box score. You can see that uh, Chicago got 106 uh, field goal attempts to 87. Uh, you can see that 24 fast break points for New York, and there were 24 fast break points for Chicago. Uh, and But there were 41 free throw attempts for Chicago, 23 uh, for the uh, Knicks, so that's really why things went bad. Uh, and we can look here at the fourth quarter to see what really happened. The, the Knicks shot 26% and the Bulls 50%. So that was really what happened. Uh, there were uh, 
eight turnovers too, uh, four for Walt Frazier in the fourth quarter. So the game is over, and uh, this is Lefty Dad signing off. If you like this, please give me a like or subscribe. So uh, Lefty Dad signing off.